Hello, welcome to SportWorks Kingdom Moments. Glad you could join us today. We finally got the sun sun poking out here and then enjoying part of a, a Wednesday afternoon. Uh, but again, grateful for the day God has for us. We've been praying for our student athletes as, as at least the football guys kind of working their way back in group by group and praying for their health and safety and just that that they'll be able to move forward, but but really praying that, that they just are growing in Jesus in this process. That we're having to trust Him and, and lean on Him and look to Him, I hope, more and more in all things. I pray that's happening to you. But we are in John 21. We're, we're in our, our ESV Bibles. We're, we're going to look at just verses 15 to 19. We came off of yesterday where, where Jesus shows up on the shore where they've had a lousy night fishing as far as catching fish. Uh, has them throw the net on the other side. Uh, quickly, they recognize it's Jesus. They have an incredible catch of 153 fish, we're told. They, Peter puts on his outer garment and makes to, to shore uh, swimming. Uh, the boat makes it there. They have breakfast, and, and really this is, uh, while, while it is to care for them and to minister to them, there, there's a conversation that, that needed to happen between Jesus and Peter. Jesus had declared kind of Peter the leader from, from the get-go. Um, you know, God gave Peter this group. I mean, God gave Jesus this group and, and, and has it to be Peter to be the rock, to be the leader of this group. And, and remember, he was said he was ready to die with Jesus that night. And, and Jesus let him know, hey, you're going to deny me three times before that rooster crows or the trumpet blew in that hour. And, and as it turns out, that's exactly what happened. And Peter's still reeling from that. He was there when, when Jesus showed up the two other times, but we don't have any personal conversation really that went on there. Uh, and, and Jesus probably senses, and it's Peter who wants to go back to fishing. And six others said, hey, we'll go with you. Uh, and now they've had this wonderful breakfast that Jesus provided and had cooked up for them. So we do still have the, the resurrected son of the living God alive and, and still serving this group. Uh, continuing to teach them that they ought to serve one another, and, and we enter into this conversation. Now, now I've watched leaders on teams, and, and there are times that you know a coach has got to pull that that team leader into the office and have just a real heart to heart. There's things he needs that leader to do. He needs that leader to be about, and and if that leader is struggling just on his own day to day responsibilities, uh, you know. That, Coach has got to get that straightened out. And, and so a heart-to-heart -heart happens. Uh, I've been here in you know, our baseball banquets. We've had different older players. Back. They all talk about um, what seems to stick out to most of them is some memorable moment conversation they had with their head coach. I don't think Peter's ever going to forget this one either. He's got some questions in the midst of it, but, but let's, let's jump in here because we, we know Peter denied three times. We're going to see some things here. So verse 15 when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, you know, we've talked before, when, when Peter's on a good note, it's just Peter. I mean, that's the name Jesus gave him was Peter. Simon was his name before. So when he's kind of in trouble or needing reprimanded or snapped back into it, it it's Simon Peter. Uh, and so it's Simon Peter that Jesus is meeting with right here. Um, by the end, it'll be just Peter. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And you may have heard there's within the Greek there's, gosh, I've seen up to seven different words for for love. There could be more. Um, you know, we we as our language kind of combines combines some things down into what one word, whereas in another language they've got a lot of different words to describe different parts of it. We'll instead stick an adjective in front of something, but but. Agape love is this love that, that, that we'll see from, from God, that it's of the mind, it's, it's a declaration, it's unconditional. It's, he, he loved us while we were yet sinners in this agape love, that it was his choice that I'm loving you. Again, it has nothing to do with my feelings, my emotions. I choose to love you because I love you. And so it's a strong form, maybe the strongest form of love, that, the, the word that there is when we really look at it from a matter of fact. And so that's the word Jesus is going to use at least in the first two times he questions Peter. And so that's his, that's his question here. He, he says, Simon, John, son of John, do you love me, agape me, more than these? Now, who are these? And, and, and we've got differences of opinion from commentators there, right? He's, he's back to fishing. Is he saying, Peter, do you love me more than, than all that's out here? 
the occupation you had before I knew you? Do, do you love me more than all of this? Like, are you, are you still willing to follow me and, and be about the things that, that, that I have you to be about? Uh, it could be simply the, you know, the, his, his friends. But I, I do feel like it probably somewhat relates to his old occupation and certainly some of the relationships he has within that and, and just the whole, this was my identity before I knew you, Jesus. And Jesus saying, do, do you agape love me more than all of this, more than these people, more than this setting, more than... I, I can't know for sure that, but, but I think we can infer, and even if it's just more than the other disciples, uh, we have a question that should be able to be answerable. He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he used the phileo, which is kind of friendship love. Now remember, Peter was ready to die for Jesus. At least that's what he verbally declared. And that I, there's no way I'll deny you. Like, I'm ready to go out and die. And then we saw in the garden, he grabs that official sword and takes a whack. Like, I mean, they'd have died quickly in that battle, barring Jesus miraculously, you know, just look like a Star Wars movie, using the force with angels and just knocking them all down. Um, it, it wouldn't have gone well. And that's not why Jesus came. Uh, so, so but, but Peter knows the last time he stuck his mouth out there his foot out there and declared uh, this love that would be bigger and stronger than anybody else's in that group he, he failed and everybody knows he failed and I think he I think he desperately wants to say I agape love you Jesus that I'm all in and, and I think he is ridden with guilt his pride's been been greatly crushed and he is can't bring himself to say it because his actions didn't live up to it the last time I think he's incredibly fearful of, uh, I don't want to be fake about this. And, and so he gives back this answer of, I'm, yeah, in a friend way, I love you. Um, yeah, you can, I think you can imagine that. I, I know I can certainly put myself in, in feeling all of the weight of that. So Jesus isn't done. Uh, he said, yes, Lord, you know that I fillet I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time. Simon, son of John, do you agape, do you love me? He, being Peter, said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I, phileo, love you. And so we have the same contradiction again. Uh, contrast of Jesus asking, Do you really love, love me? Uh, and Peter saying, As a friend, I, I love you. Uh, you know, again, he's questioning, Are you going to leave this stuff and still really be mine? Jesus' response, he said to him, tend my sheep. So he said, feed my lambs. Now he says, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And this time Jesus uses the term phileo, love me. Do you love me as a friend love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time. I don't think he's grieved because he's asked him three times. There's there's a change in what Jesus is essentially asking him. Like you, I've asked, I've asked, I've gotten your answer, your answer. So now I'm bringing it down to your level. Do you love me in this way? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Uh, yeah, I can hear the despair in Peter of like, I so desperately wish I could say agape love you. And, and I... And he says phileo again in, in response to Jesus' question. And, and he's grieved in that. And Jesus then says to him, Feed my sheep. And then truly, truly, which again, anytime we've heard that, we've said it's kind of coach getting our eyes, getting our attention. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. He, he's just told Peter that, 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 that when you are older, you're going to face a death like, like I did, that, that you are going to be crucified and, and you're going to be taken and, and you're going to be stretched out. Um, again, got to be a little hard to hear. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after this, he said to him, follow me. And we're going to stop here. It goes on with some, some more we're going to pick up tomorrow. But, but the reality is he, he at one other point 
much similar after some fish caught thrown at the other side told um, Peter and Andrew to, to pick up their nets to come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men and he wants them to take care of his sheep so he said he said if we look at all of them feed my lambs tend my sheep and then the last time he said feed my sheep like Peter Peter I've declared you're going to be the leader of this group you, you need to take over shepherding where I was shepherding my my sheep need to be led and I'm going to be going back to the father and I'm going to send my spirit but but you were <laughs> brought along trained equipped <laughs> To be my leader, that your failure, I knew you were going to fail. It's not, you were free to fail in that. You won't fail me again like that. And that wasn't a threat. That was a simply, I, I know the one I'm sending. I know the work I accomplished. I know the difference I can make in your life and, and will be making in your life that you will bear fruit. People will know that you are mine. You will have a boldness and an, a, just a, a spirit of, not of timidity and fear, but of, of power, love, and self-control, that, that things are going to change in you, Peter. And I need you to leave the nets behind. I, I need you to love me more than these. I need you to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and come follow me. And, and it's time to get over the rest of this. No more sulking. No more feeling sorry for yourself. No more anything else. I love you. I need this from you. And you're the one that God has chosen to fill this role, and you're going to follow it. And, and, and really, that's where it stops. And, and we're going to get into some more tomorrow because you're going to have questions like, well, if that's happening to me, then what about him over there? And what about, and it's a great verse, so I can't wait to jump in tomorrow on that. But, but as of where we sit today, are you feeling sorry for yourself? Or are you continuing to make the same mistakes over and over again? If Jesus were to ask you, do you love me? Agape, love me. Can you honestly say that you agape love him? Can you at least get to the point where Peter is today, that you, you phileo love him, that I, that as a friend, yes, I, I love you more than most all of this here. Well, we want to get to where it's above all of this here, that, that our love for God is above all else, that his love for us has been agape love from the beginning. It's not been caught up in emotions and, and this or my works. It's your works. It's caught up simply in the work that Christ came to do to set us free to make us his. How would you answer? Do you, do you love me? If you were to hear Jesus say that, if he were to sit right now with you, meet with you, do you love him? And then, then does your life reflect that? Do you feel good about that? I, again, I'm convinced Peter was just struggling with, I think he desperately wanted to be able to say something that he knew his actions he didn't feel right about saying. Later on, I think he can very well say it. And we're told Peter did die being crucified. Not only that, he, he didn't deem himself worthy to be crucified the same way Jesus was, so he was crucified upside down. Uh, we know that after he and John are beaten for, for sharing the gospel in the beginning of Acts, that, that they leave that beating, that flogging, praising God and rejoicing they were considered worthy to have some of the same scars that Jesus had. Things changed drastically in their life. Again, it's my prayer they change drastically for us. Do, do you love him? And then his final command, I mean, he's telling us to take care of those that are that his. Are, are you involved with a community of folks that believe, that, that you encourage, that you help feed, that you pray for, that you bring along? Uh, do you have those that you're following? And, and then mostly he says, follow me. Are you following Jesus? I, I pray that we would be ready to follow well, let me pray. I think I've gone long. I can't see my time, but I feel like I have. But Heavenly Father, we thank you and love you. I pray that you would grab our hearts. Or the, the places where we have failed, the enemy's done way too good a job of, of allowing shame and guilt to remain, that, that we would come before you. That when you meet with us and you're ready to meet with us, that, that we would get over ourselves when it comes to that. And understand you died and paid for that. That, that you have set us free from that. That you've made us new. Uh, that there is no more shame and guilt. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, that we would repent, that we would believe that you've forgiven us and we'd be ready to follow you and to trust you in all things. Give us hearts to love and to believe. Give us hearts as well that forgive those that are around us, encourage and share that truth of what it is you've done on our behalf, that you have things for us to be about and to do, to bring glory and honor to you. And so we look forward to it. Pray that you would grab and set us free from, from the enemy 
and that we would rejoice in what it is you've done on our behalf. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you all. You all have a great night.